So uh, <laughs> this is the red Epic MX. Uh, this is the latest, greatest until pretty soon and there's going to be another sensor that's going to come out. So, <laughs> you know, that's uh, red. The whole idea about uh, behind red, one of the things that they did that was kind of brilliant is the whole idea of trying to, they, they, they said they wanted to eliminate obsolescence. Well, they can't do that entirely, but red uh, makes lots of little firmware and software improvements. And so there's firmware updates all the time when they improve things and those are generally free. And because of their design and they create things modular that when a new sensor comes out which is the dragon sensor you'll be able to upgrade your sensor you'd have to send back your brain uh, this is parts called the brain you'd send that back and you get a new sensor and that's going to be a, a very expensive thing but at least all your peripherals and stuff would be still good whereas the old way of doing it like what Sony used to do and Canon and everybody else is they'd come out with improvements you'd have to buy the whole new camera so this way, uh, you're only buying certain pieces. And, and uh, lots of improvements are done through firmware updates. Those are free, you just download them. Uh, so the Red Epic is a modular design. And what that means is, now the Epic is different from the Red. The Red used to be all one piece, the Red One. The uh, Epic, they've gone to a modular design. So this center piece right in here, uh, this part here, even not including this side piece. This, this is your media. Uh, it's called a red mag. Um, they're very expensive because it has to be able to process a lot of information uh, very quickly. Um, it is an SSD card, uh, which is a um, solid state drive. So it's a particular solid state drive for red. So it's called a red mag. This particular one here uh, has a uh, 256 gigabytes uh, that it can um, hold, so that's quite a bit. And this panel here is even a modular piece that you put on when you get the camera. So the brain is just this center little piece right in here. The brain contains the sensor, and it contains the computer and the processing and all that. So most of the stuff is in here. This back piece here is really just for power. This is, this is, this is, this is for, um, so this has uh, where you put your batteries in it. So this is a quad uh, battery holder. So it, you use four red volt batteries or two red volt XLs. So the XLs are like a double size. Okay, and see there's another one on this side. So actually what's nice is it's only using one of these at a time as soon as this one goes dead, it automatically switches over to the other one, so it gives you more, more time. Now, the other, um, Andy, when you get a chance, can you show them a red volt? The regular red volts are half the size. Unfortunately, they only last about a half hour. So, but, the idea there is that you put four of those in there, and then you're going to get two hours out of it, approximately, depending on how much you're draining. And so, again, it goes from one to the other to the other to the other. So we're going to, ha we have six of these, I believe, right, in a package. So as soon as these uh, go dead, you pull it out, put it on charge, uh, swap it through the, with the other. Um, these uh, red volts are nice because you only have to have two of them. These, these last, I believe, 90 minutes each, so you actually get a total of uh, three hours out of this setup. Okay. So um, the other... And the reason they design it this way is there's a lot of different designs. You can also put a plate on the back um, uh, that's a V-mount plate so that you can use bricks. And bricks are, are longer, they're a different design, so they won't stick out quite as much. They'll go here, um, and, but they, um, there's, some, there's advantages and disadvantages. Um, the bricks are good uh, because they, they don't stick out as much. The nice thing about the red volts is because they're lighter weight, you can actually strip this part off and put a side handle. So you put a little small compartment here and that actually fits um, one red volt battery in it. And so if you're trying to, let's say, fly this on a helicopter or something where you needed it really light, like one of the RC helicopters, um, or on the Movi, if people heard about the Movi, it's kind of like, um, sort of like an image stabilized, like a Steadicam, then then, you, then weight is important, so you would use prime lenses, which lighter weight. You could put the side handle on. You could put just one battery in it. It would 
you would maybe even take this off, you'd strip the weight way down, and then that way uh, you've got lower weight. The downside is you'd only have a half hour before you'd have to replace that battery. So again, it's all modular. So that's a side handle that has a battery in it. There's this quad, and then there's the brick. Um, this piece up here is actually not part of the camera, um, but it's called the cage. The, they actually have pieces, and we don't have it on there because we're missing a piece, but you can actually put this cage along the side as well. I think the top is, is just fine for what we need to use it for, and that is for attaching things. So you notice how we've attached the LCD from this using um, an arm. Um, and so uh, that's one way. This handle is actually attached on a sliding piece here so we can move it around. That's the carrying handle. So that's the cage is, is meant to attach things and accessories. The cage is also referred to as a cheese plate. Uh, so anybody, uh, why is it called a cheese plate? Anybody want to venture? Got holes in it, just like Swiss cheese, exactly. So these cheese plates uh, have um, quarter inch 20, which is a standard uh, holes in it. So anything with quarter inch 20 you can use. Um, I'm surprised they don't have a 3 8 inch. 3 8 is also another standard that you can mount with. Um, maybe there's some 3 8 on the side, I'm not sure. But quarter inch uh, 20, 20 refers to threads. I believe in an inch it has 20 threads in an inch. So um, somebody correct me if I'm wrong, but th that's a standard that's used in the industry. So th um, most accessories are going to have a quarter inch 20. So you can uh, mount it to that. You can even, this piece here, you can even move that around. So it's, uh, putting the cage on is handy. Uh, the, there's holes here for the fan. Do you hear the fan? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you'd think, mm, that fan's pretty loud. It, it is. There's a lot of electronics and a lot of sophistication in here, and so it has a fan to keep it cool. But right now, it's set on auto function. And what that means is, is that when I uh, start recording, the fan will go down and it'll be just, you won't hear it. It, it should be um, quiet to record without it. It does it automatically. If, if you're in a really tight thing and you're still hearing that little bit of a fan, you can actually disable it, but you've got to be careful and, and, you know, get it back on again. So I like leaving it in auto. So look, I'm just going to roll a little bit and you'll hear the difference. As soon as I record, it's going to stop. Ready and record. Oops, media's unformatted, never mind. I'll have to format the media. Anyway, I'll have to demonstrate that later. That was a big, uh, it's like ready and nothing. <laughs> okay, so take my word for it for now that it, goes, uh, that it goes down. And let's see, what other parts? So this is the brain, that's important. This is the um, uh, quad battery module uh, and um, this is the, uh, the SSD module, meaning that it's where you put your SSD drives. You want to be very careful and not mess with these once they're put in. Uh, you want to eject them through the menu, so once you finish recording, then you can eject them, and you can pull it out. Uh, as Andy discovered, uh, because of this distance, it might be, you might have to remove uh, one of the batteries. Of course, you probably just turn the camera off when you eject the media, so you might pull this battery out to give it room. Um, this one's flashing right now, so that means this is the one that's being used. Okay, so uh, when this one's out, it'll move over to the other one and it'll start powering on that. Can you, uh, you can hot swap them. Yes, you can hot swap them. Um, in fact, let's let's see what happens. I don't think any. If I pull this one out, if it'll go to the other one, we'll find out. It should hot swap. I just have to get my fingers in there. <laughs> not, not designed for people with fat fingers. It's still going. Uh, it auto oh automatically went over to that one. Now, it'll be interesting to see whether it goes back to this one or not. Yeah, but it isn't that heavy. Not really. I mean, it's heavier than a double A, but. Okay, <laughs> let's put this one back in. Let's see if it goes. <laughs> see, it now looks like it's gone back to this one. It wants to. What it does want to do is it wants to use the power from the one that's drained down. So if this is drained down a little bit, it reverted to this one because it wants to do that one. It'll run that out before it switch over. So it's very, very intelligent that way. Okay. Um, 
Something else that, that you should know, when you have large cameras like this, usually you mount it using a dove plate system. So this piece in here is a, a dove plate. There are other dove plates that are longer, or it's actually called a dove tail because it's, it's a, a little wedge. It looks a little bit like a dove's tail, theoretically. Um, and so I don't, when you come up to look at it, it's, it's, I don't know if you can see, but it's not square, it's, it's angled. And so that's so that this whole system can slide back and forth. So this red thing right here, it's on lock. And this is new, so it's really stiff, so it may not slide very well. But it's, in theory, see how it's sliding a little bit? So if I, for balance purposes, I can slide it on there. This is a real problem, because ah, there it goes. We're going to put some silicon on there, because it's, it's stiffer than it should be. You don't want it like, zoom. You want to put a little effort into it. Now, I want to, now that I've adjusted it, I want to lock this back. That puts friction on it so it doesn't move. There is also a quick release plate right here. You press that in, pull it, and that allows you to lift the camera off. Um, so you can either do it that way or you can slide the whole thing off. It depends on what you're doing. Uh, generally speaking, you would slide it off the dovetail and leave the dovetail on the head. Um, so that, that quick release, you just pull the, the, uh, this out, pull that out, and then it pops out. But I'm not going to do that because there's a lot of weight and stuff on there. Okay, so um, these are referred to as iris rods, I-R-I-S, or just rods. People just shorten it for rods, but I don't know why it's named iris rods. That's just what they're called. I, they're, I'm, I don't know. Um, so... Um, so what do you think the purpose of the rods are? There's two purposes, at least, for the rods. Vibration? No. No? Any other thoughts? I think it's the camera back and forth if you want to slide it. Um, that's true, although you could, you could do that with, you could have this plate without the rods. The lens support, yes. <laughs> yeah, remember to call it a support. Um, Yes, uh, so it's, it's to support it, this piece right here to uh, support the lens weight. Now, you might think it's strange that it needs to do that. This lens, this is a zoom lens. This is a red zoom. It's made by red. Um, as you can see, it's big. It's heavy. Um, it has a lot of glass in it. As you know, it's $10,000. Um, this is the mount where it's going in. Um, this, uh, here's something important. I want you to remember this. Write it down. The standard lens for cine lenses is called a PL mount, PL, and that stands for positive locking, okay? So most cine lenses have PL mounts on them. There are other mounts, like there are Canon mounts, so you could put a Canon lens on here. There's um, uh, Leica mounts, there's other different mounts, but PL mount is the most common, okay? Positive locking. I'll show you when we take the lens off because it, it locks into place. Here's the thing. Because this lens is so heavy, if it were unsupported, that weight is putting pressure on the, on the locking part and also on the pieces on the flange, the back of the lens. And so it might start to bend and bow and, and, and not be square. You know, it could start doing like that. So it could, A, it would damage the lens or the mount. The lens would be the worst, but, well, neither are good. And, and also, a, in an extreme case, your photography would be off because your lens would be... Um, have anybody seen about lens whacking with DSLRs? That's where you actually are recording and you actually take the lens slightly off to get flares while it's recording. It's called, lens, it's called lens whacking. You can look it up on... Uh, it gets some pretty strange effects. So, um, you don't want to do that with these cameras. It's dangerous. Uh, so, so, this supports the weight so that it, it's, it doesn't cause that stress. So you only need to do that on larger zoom lens. Um, some people think it's a very, I, I, I agree, with the Canon 70 to 200 zoom lens for the DSLRs, it's a good idea to support those as well because um, those are a pretty heavy camera and the mount on the Canon camera is not as beefy as this mount is and so it doesn't take as much to torque it. Okay. If you put the 70 to 200, if you had an adapter to PL, uh, which they don't, 
if, if you had a cannon mount lens here, you could probably put that on and you might get away without having the support, but you should support a, a zoom lens. Just get in the habit of supporting any zoom lens. Now, this is not the best support system. Uh, this is a friction support system. We're doing that temporarily. On order is the proper support. The proper support, so that you can't make any mistakes, has like a little collar that's going to fit onto the red zoom and then it's going to have a little threaded screw and then this piece is going to come up and it's going to screw in and lock into place. The, the part about this is you have to put it just, take a, just enough pressure so that you're not letting the lens sag but you don't want to put so much pressure that you're pushing up the opposite way and creating a problem. So it's, it's a, it takes a little bit of feel and, t and skill and experience to do this type. So we're doing that so we can do the workshop, but uh, eventually we're going to have the correct kind so that it will be a little more idiot proof so that you don't <laughs> damage the uh, lens or the mount. Okay? So lens support, um, and these are iris rods. Oh, the other thing that's important to know is that red is, works generally off of a 19 millimeter rod. That is the um, diameter of the rod. It's 19 millimeter. And then generally speaking, there's, a, there's a, um, a standardized distance for most 19 millimeter rods. I don't remember what that is, but, but this is all standard 19 millimeter. It's also called 19 millimeter studio. These are pretty lightweight because these are actually carbon fiber. And, and uh, they're more expensive, uh, but they, they keep the weight down. They don't add a lot. Uh, these rods, by the way, can slide in and out and you can adjust them. Now, now there's uh, two other things that the rods are used for. And one is, you know, the follow focus system. Mm -hmm. We don't have one yet for this because the camera's brand new. But here's, here's the teeth. See the teeth right here on the zoom? Excuse me, on the focus. Okay, so you would put a um, you would put a system here, uh, a follow focus system with a gear that would line up with those teeth so that you could use your follow focus to do your focus here. If you notice, he, here's six feet, here's eight feet. Look how much room that is. And then even between 10 feet and 12 feet, a lot more barrel rotation. You see between 20 and 50 feet on one of the Canon lenses is like you can, you can breathe on it and it's <laughs> changed, you know? <laughs> So, so this is much easier. It means you have to move your hand more, get more of a workout, but it's easier to do precision focusing. So your follow focus would go on here, and in which case I would probably end up moving this lens support back a little bit because it would be a little bit in the way. See this thread here for your zoom? You can also put uh, what's called a microforce zoom control. Uh, actually, it's the Hayden motor. You put the motor here, you've got a, the, the, the microforce control is a, uh, puts, goes on the handle so that if you want to zoom electronically and have a smooth zoom, then that motor turns these gears and then does the zoom. Then the last thing that the rods are, are used for is for the matte box. That's, a, that's actually a, a really important one, so you can use the matte box. Here's the loosening. So we just loosen that up, and then when you screw it in, it snugs it. So really, it only holds on by friction. It's not my favorite. I mean, th these types are good because they're lightweight and good if you're flying the camera on a jib or steady camera, whatever you're doing to get the weight down. But the problem is they can come off easier, whereas if you put it on the rods and lock it down, it's a lot less likely to slide off. And if it slides off and hits the ground, you can lose your filters. Okay, so that goes on like this, Then we'll lock that. Make sure that's square. Uh, it's two things. It's, it's used to, um, to eliminate flare light, to try to, to, to eliminate flare light, uh, but its primary purpose is for putting filters in. So you see these little slots here? Those go in right, do you see these little thumb screws here? Yeah. See, right in like that. Oops, there we go. Then we lock that in, thumb tight, not too tight, just thumb tight. <laughs> don't, don't, don't gorilla it. That's our religious mantra at this point. Okay. Point. Finger tight. Finger tight. 
Now this, this needs to be tightened finger tight as well. So you see, you see these right here? You, you finger tight those. Oh, that's cool. Okay, and then that puts a little, that gives it a little friction. So now I can still move it, but you see, now, you see right over here, see, I'm, I'm getting it in the shot. So I don't want it right there, I want it right, whoops, this thing needs to be tightened up a little bit more. I want it right, I'll bring it in the shot, and then go up just a little bit. And you see what that's doing is that's taking any flare light coming from these lights over here out of the lens. Now, if I was at, I'm at a 50 millimeter, if I go all the way wide, well, that's a problem. So I'm going to have um, to do this. Uh, what's also a problem, if I go full wide, and I'll address this later, this matte box cannot handle 5K at, at 18 millimeters. You, uh, you see, I can't, it's seeing my box. It's, it's seeing that. I don't think I can slip it on anymore. No, it goes, it's on as far as it can go. But there is a solution to that. In fact, let me just show you something else while we're here. When red first came out, they were 4K. Okay? When they went to 5K, actually it's a 6K sensor and you can actually shoot in 6K in stills. But you can't shoot in, in video and stills. So you can shoot in 5K. The problem is they made the, it made the sensor even larger, which sees more area. And a big problem was that it, it, it meant that a lot of lenses are incompatible. They weren't large enough to cover that area, including their own lens that they, that they designed, th this zoom lens. So generally speaking, I know that their prime lenses that they make, can, the widest of those can cover the 5K, but this cannot. So you can't shoot in 5K, but you can shoot in 4K. I'll show you later what will happen. So even if I take this matte box off, does anybody notice anything? Yeah. Do you know what that's vignette. called? Vignette. 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 So it's vignetting. Vignette. Okay, it's vignetting. So uh, that's, that's not really good. Um, so, so basically uh, shooting at, uh, now this is in 5K 2 to 1. 2 to 1 ratio, remember we talked about aspect ratio, so as you can see it's twice as wide. If we shoot it at 5K HD we might get rid of this or get rid of more of it. I think the safest way to go is to shoot in 4K okay, with this lens. Again, if you had prime lenses you could shoot in 5K. Believe me, 4K is plenty big and, 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 and it's just more data, so you probably will be happy shooting with 4K over 5K. Let me, let me show you, let me show you something, 4K, when you start going 2K, 4K, it measures the amount of, of lines, um, it measures the amount of lines horizontally, so it's measuring these across, not this, so if it's 5K, it's 5K across this way, or if it's 4K, it's 4, so that determines partly the width. Of, of how wide you get on any given lens with that sensor. So let me show you another, I don't know if everybody can see this, but here's, here's your di different sensor size. So you see, the, you see how the, um, the MX sensor that on the one on the outside shows you what it covers. Uh, so that's in a way the 6K area for stills. The 5K is what you is the maximum you can shoot for um, record area. So you see the the uh, it's 5,120 pixels. What? Then 4K is uh, 4,096. If you look at your still your DSLRs in still mode in RAW, you're around 4K. You're around 4,000, yeah. but you can't do that in in video. And then 3K, as you can see, it all gets smaller. So what's happening is you almost want to, sh the, the, one of the pluses and the downsides of the RED system is that if you don't shoot in at least 4K, what happens is you're starting to get, even with a wide lens, you're getting narrower and narrower field of view. Because you saw this right here. In other words, that's your frame size. So at 2K, you're literally, you know, 
you know, half the size of 4K, which makes sense in terms of your width. So you're actually cropping in. So your wide lens won't be as wide. So really it's not, I mean, there are times when you might shoot in 2K, but I would recommend in shooting in 4K. Um, 4K is still going to be very, very wide. It's actually wider than your crop sensor on your like Canon 7D or your Canon 60D. It's still a wider perspective. Let's look at putting a filter in. Thank you. This is the filter tray. Okay, you have two filter trays with this camera. So you take the filter tray. This is an ND3. Remember we talked about it? It's, yes. it's, it's a little bit smoky. See how it knocks down? Believe it or not, it cuts the light in half. I can see really? Yep. So, um, so it, cuts, see how it cuts the light in half. Okay? So one stop, right? So the way you put it in is you carefully, and, and it's best to do this not over cement. <laughs> you know, it's best to actually do it over something padded. Uh, I'll, 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 I'll do it over your jacket or whatever. Assistants, they do it all the time over, well, most of them won't do it over cement, but they might do it over grass. So you slip this in here, and you let that rest there. Then you pull this part up, and then that is spring-loaded. That locks it. That locks it, uh, a, a spring lock, and then uh, this one does, yeah, this one has a little tightening. Just snug it and, and loose finger tight. You just don't want the spring to work easily anymore. Okay, so then that puts it in there. See, now, don't want to shake it too hard, but, okay, yeah, you know. He doesn't trust himself. Okay, so um, then you just slide it back in, and you, and you want to put... Each filter you put it the closest to the lens as possible so that you don't get uh, bounce back light. If you use two filters, you can use this one too, but you always use put it on the inside one first. How, so many, how many have you used maximum before filter-wise at once? Oh, uh, like about four filters maybe. So but you just push the, the outer? Uh, this matte box only handles two. Oh, okay. Yeah, so you'd get a, a different kind. And that kind weighs more, and that's the kind that will go on the rise. <laughs> but these days, I, I don't do... I usually don't do more than two. So put, so put this down. Now, over here, there is uh, a, a little, you see this little, um, can everybody see this little one right here? This is the one that, that tightens and holds the mat box firmly on. This little one right here is, is once this, this has sort of a click stop and it goes down and, and then it sort of stops, but it could fall through. Now, fortunately, my, my rods would catch it, but what you want to do is you want to lock it, and this little thing puts friction on it that locks it in place. And so now, when we come back, it's, uh, if you look over here, see how much darker it is? Yeah. Let me do this. Okay, I'll loosen this up. I'm going to lift it out, and then watch, see the difference? Mm -hmm. So that is, again, how, how much light does it block? Half. And what is that in stops? One. One, One stop, very good. If it was an N6, wow, if it was an N6, what would it be? How many stops? Wait, what was it? N6. Uh, it would be seven? <laughs> I don't know. Sorry, I'm getting too So six three, six, and nine. Oh, that's right. So, oh, that, okay. so what does N6 do? How many stops? Two. 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 Very good. N9? Point, three. three. Technically, it's point six, point three, but everybody just says, give me an N6. Give me an N9. So they, they drop that that pesky point. So. You can see all the details that we lost before in the <coughs> Right. So, um, again, I occasionally will use ND filters inside if I'm using a high ISO, especially if I'm with a camera like the Sony F5 in S-Log2. It's 2000. It's like, that's way too sensitive. So I'm usually, even on the inside, I'm putting neutral density filters in. But more often than not, you use these outdoors. Um, um, again, I might use it indoors if I want shallower depth of field because, well, as you can see, I can compensate now by opening up my iris. Right now I'm at 5.6. I can open up to a 4 and that, that takes care of the ND that overrides that. And then if I go all the way to 2.9, which is almost 2.8, just a fraction off, then you see I can be much brighter here. You don't lose the detail on the lights either. Okay. So, um, all right, so that's the NDs. There are other map boxes that have a whole stage that spins, 
and so only so these would stay the same but only the the round you put a round filter in there for the for the um, polarizer and only that stage rotates but I don't think the, this this does that for sure okay all right uh, any questions about the exterior of uh, the camera the power button and the record buttons right here on the side nice big red got a little light okay it's powering up uh, anyway they take a while to power up and so you just have to be patient I hear the fan that means it's going through its process okay now it's, it's come up again this piece here is referred to as the uh, this is the red LCD it's the red brand it's the only one that you can basically use with all the functions the LCD you can't put another LCD on it and then touch screen and use all those you can put another LCD on and use it as a viewfinder but uh, you won't have the touch screen um, capabilities uh, this is very expensive we have to be very careful with it because we don't want to break the glass or then it's it's you know if it cracks or anything like that it's no good uh, the other thing you should know is that these connectors here that's connecting this to the camera these these are called a limo l-e-m-o these are called limo they're multi-pin connectors uh, that's so that's sort of a standard so these are limo connectors uh, we have um, uh, we have a backup in case any of these get harmed because if this gets destroyed, we, the camera's no good. We can't operate it. Uh, so um, uh, it's a problem. So, but we have, we have a backup. But again, these are expensive cables, so we, we want to treat them nicely. The LCD screen is touch screen navigation. And there's this top row here. See the one that starts right here that says 2398, 800, all that? The top screen is referred to as the basic menu. So you might want to write this down because this is important. That's the basic menu. And these are the items that you're most likely to change uh, and adjust. And so to change uh, something, so let's say I want to change the ISO. I hit ISO. You see it comes up. Uh, I'm at 800. I can go all the way down to 250. Or I can slight, or I can go, see how if I go to 250, how it gets yeah. And, now, and now if you tap the screen, it goes away, and now it's much darker, right? See, see over here how it's darker? Because obviously it's less light sensitive. So now if I tap that again, see now it doesn't like my finger. Let's try the thumb. Okay, let's move that across. Let's go. 800 is, with this camera, is, um, is, is the default. That's where I would recommend you start. I would not recommend going under 800 with this camera, uh, and I'll get into that reason later. It, it, it affects where your dynamic range is, so 800 or above. Um, you can. Um, okay, so then once I, to get out of that, you just tap anywhere on the screen, and that takes away the, uh, uh, that sub-menu. So this is my frame rate. This is my ISO. Those are things I might change a lot. Here's my color temperature at 5,000. Here's my 5K. Here's my, uh, what do you think that is? Shutter speed. Shutter speed. Is my shutter speed correct? No. 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 What should it be? Well, I have a choice. I, but in this case, I'm going to go precise because that's exactly how it should be. Clicked it in. Now, as you see, I got more light, actually. It made it brighter. I probably would, would expose down if I was, I'm going to risk this. So looking over here, that would be a that might be a better exposure right in there, you see. So um, okay, so that's there. This is my color temperature. Um, it's at 5,000. That's probably pretty decent for this room. You can also do auto um, white balance or custom white balance is what I should say. This up here, this RC uh, eight to one. Does anyone want to guess what that might be? Ratio control. Close. It's called, it's red code. RC stands for red code. Um, eight to one, any other guesses on what eight to one is? It is your, uh, no, it's actually the compression ratio. Oh. It's how much you're compressing it. So this camera shoots raw, which means that it's a huge amount of data. Mm -hmm. So technically it's still raw, 
but what it does do is it compresses it. It uses an algorithm to compress it, um, not like JPEG, but it, it, it compresses it so that the file size wouldn't be monstrous. So, so you actually can't shoot in pure raw. You shoot in raw with some compression. The compression range on this camera is, goes from 3 to 1 to 18 to 1. 18 to 1 is higher compression. The default, this is important, I want you to know this, the default is 8 to 1, where it is now. That's fairly normal. 8 to 1, I would recommend as a starting point, because believe me, your stuff will look great. If you start going below 8 to 1, like if you do 3 to 1, your file sizes are huge, you won't get as much data on the card. Which one is that? What? This right here is the menu button. So when you want to get into the advanced menus, so again, these are considered basic up top. This will take you to the advanced. When I hit that, okay, now you see those other things that it sent you to? Okay, this is uh, a secondary menu. Now, if you hit most things, if you're trying to find something and you don't know where it is, there's a very good chance that it's under the settings. Uh, the other one is media. That's when we, we're going to use for, for doing the card, for formatting the card. But if I go to settings, now you, look, now you have lots of other choices. <laughs> and then you see, even from there, you can drill down even more. Now you get tools <laughs> and zebra under that. And so uh, even that can go even further. So these are, you're drilling down. You're going further and further down. So let's go ahead and get out of there. So um, let's go ahead and format our media while we're here. So we'll hit media. Come on. There we go. Now it says, see how it says uh, eject? When you're ready to, when you're ready to get the, the media out, when you've shot all your stuff, you use that to eject it. But right now we're going to do format media. We format it. Now, you see that um, here's something interesting here. This is um, like your camera slate. So this is the ID, so, so this is our only camera, so we're going to call it the A camera. But if you were running a show and you were running three cameras at a time, you might set one up as the B camera, one as the C camera. Um, so, uh, and then real number, uh, if we want, let's go ahead and, and go to one. Okay, so this will be real one, A, uh, camera position, um, usually I keep it center. And then uh, we have a choice on time code. Uh, if we were doing edge time code, we could start at time code 1, but I'm not going to worry about that at this point. Right now, as you can see, it's on time of day or free run, and it's, it's, it's doing that now. So as long as I have time code, I'm not going to be too concerned about it. So now I'm going to hit format. I hit that. Media formatting, and before too long, it will be all formatted and ready to go might take a little longer because it might be the first time this card's been formatted. So, Okay, so that's the, the top row. If I, hit the, um, if I hit the menu, come on. Let's just hit it. I'm hitting it. There we go. I, now I've got my basic one back. You see the, the, the frame rate and all that? Now, this bottom one is the lower row. Um, that is, uh, that has all your important uh, information data down here. You see the thing that says uh, 2998? That is your base. I'll show you how to change the base. Remember we talked about the time base or the project base as opposed to just the frame rate. Uh, 5K is the resolution. Same thing up here. So it just tells you what you have it set at. And then uh, RC 8 to 1, what is that again? Compression. Red code, it stands for red code 8 to 1. So it's your compression. Very good. All right. Uh, somebody guessed what this one was. What is this here? That was RGB. RGB histogram, correct. Um, you see this next one over? We'll go into this more. That is called the, um, uh, most people just call it the stoplights or the traffic lights. Uh, it's the, um, the, it's a, a clip alert meter or something. I'll, I'll, I'll get the real name for it, the official name. I just call it the stoplight. Uh, that is a, um, uh, shows you, you see how those are lit up? 
That tells me that something's clipping. What do you think is clipping in this scene? The lights. The lights. Okay, I'm going to risk this. If I go down and get rid of that, then you see they went off. Now, as I tilt up, as I hit the lights, wow, it's not clipping yet, but now, there it is. It's, now, the lights, the traffic lights didn't come on. That's interesting. There they are. Oh, you know why? Because this has so much dynamic range that that light back in there, in the corner, see back here? That's, believe it, even though it looks clipped, it's not clipped. It has so much dynamic range that you could get that back. And then, but if you're here, yes. Some of those are clipped. Uh -huh. Unfortunately, it doesn't tell you where it's clipped. It just tells you something is clipped. Right now, see right there? That's just the, the green clipping. You see, the, see that coming on and off? Yeah. That's just the green clipping. And if I pan over more, now the red's oh. clipping. Now the blue's clipping. <laughs> OK? So that's, that's a, uh, a handy. And then uh, this gets into some things like time code, HDR, other things like that. The rig stands for like a 3D rig. Um, that one-to-one -one is the magnification. Uh, the SSD, 100%. Anybody have a guess on what that would be? Memory card. Memory card, right. How much, is, how much media? So it's 100%. Uh, this 16%, I believe that's the battery that's going down. So um, then over here, this is the audio. But we're not going to have anything there uh, because we don't have that set up and we don't have a mic feeding into it. Now. This bottom row is also, what's nice about it is there's some shortcuts. So, so you remember how deep that settings menu went down and down and down and down? If you want to skip some of those earlier ones, then you can go right to, to more in the middle. So for instance, this one right here is great for the tools. So if I just hit this and hold it, now it's skipped and it, and it came up with, with those. These were like several down. So that, in other words, that, that got me further ahead. So if I wanted to, uh, to do the raw or the magnify, let me show you what the magnify. The magnify is very similar to what was on the, um, the DSLR, except it doesn't go five times, 10 times. It just does one. Oh. But when I hit magnify, watch what happens. Nothing. <laughs> OK. Whoops. Uh, no. Boom. Did you see that? Did you see what it did there? Is it, it's digital still? It's digital. But now I can okay. focus on Looks different Rick. Down there. Look at the yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't look at this. This is you're looking at it through double video. That's crap. So look at it here. Oh, oh. Battery's about to die. So I can now I can focus on Rick. Hold still there, Rick. Hold. There we go, Whoop. right there. Okay, look at this monitor here. That's the, that's the, the one that we're, and then to get out of magnify, I can just hit the screen. Whoops, nope. I'm gonna have to go, I blew that. Let's go back to, um, let's take magnify off, come on. Okay, now we're back to wide, okay. So to get rid of that, I just tap the screen, and that goes away. Um, let's see. I think to these shortcut, this one, that one shortcuts to a uh, to sort of give you a, an overview of all your sort of decisions and what's there. Uh, that's a nice thing to just check quickly. Uh, this one right here in the corner. This is the most useful one here. Uh, this one here can go into more information about uh, your media. Uh, I can format, in fact, here's a uh, short way to format the media. That's a shortcut, oh, in the instead of having to go through the menus. Would you hit that I hit one? this one, yeah, I hit yeah, that one. So it's intuitive, if you want to go in and do the media, hit that one. If you want to check your battery, then this tells you, um, okay, see that, this is, the rear battery is at 13%, you only have 12 minutes left, and we have, uh, an hour 45 left on the, uh, the rear one, it's, and it's at uh, 88%. And of course, those time estimates are based on the way it's using it now. If we started recording stuff, it would go faster. Yeah. So this camera has a lot of power, so it eats through batteries pretty quick. 
so uh, those are the um, those are the basic um, <coughs> navigation functions. And you 